Hello everyone, welcome back into another video. Today we're back in Warframe with yet another build showcase. And this time we have Zephyr Prime. She is a very cool Warframe, her whole kit revolves around being, well, light and having abilities that have wind related powers and i do think they work together pretty well all right and with that out of the way let's jump into the build as always let's start with archon shards and this time we have a couple of shards that are quite interesting as you can see i have two tau forge emerald archon shards with ability damage on enemies affected by corrosive status this will become important later so just keep in mind that this will be very useful and very important for the build then I'm using two Archon Shards with Ability Strength, you can of course upgrade them to Tau Forge. And finally there is a free slot where you can equip whatever you prefer. I do suggest Parker Velocity because I think it works quite well with Zephyr, but you can go for more Papa Strength or even another Tau Forge Emerald Shard with more Ability Damage or, you know, whatever you like. Now let's do a quick introduction of her abilities and then we can move on to the build. Her passive allows Zephyr to move faster and fall slower while airborne. So that is what we are going to do. We are just going to fly all the time and almost never touch the ground. And her passive also allows her to gain 150% crit chance with weapons while airborne. This works as modded crit chance, so it's not going to be a flat increase of 150% crit chance. It's going to be added to your whatever crit chance mod you have equipped on your weapons. Her first ability is called Tailwind, and you can use this ability in a few different ways. You have the Tailwind part of the ability, which is just a fly forward thing, and if you bump into enemies, you will deal slash damage. There is the Dive Bomb part, where you slam the ground with your one, and you will deal AoE damage to all the enemies in that area. Or you can just hold the ability, and you will just start hovering around, and you will never fall, and it does not have any duration, but it does consume quite a bit of energy, so keep that in mind. And finally, there is the Target Fix fixation part which comes from our augment target fixation and this is what allows this build to work it's basically a damage increase for your one when you slam the ground and the more enemies you hit the more damage tailwind will deal the catch is that you cannot touch the ground at all because after two seconds of being on the ground the buff will just disappear our second ability is called air burst and this is a grouping ability it does have some gimmicks of dealing more damage the more enemies you hit and it is okay i mean the range with this build is is 14 meters which is solid and the cost is 50 which is manageable and you won't be using this too much usually you just once or twice so it's fine and after grouping up those enemies they will just become staggered and stay on the ground for a little bit and that allows us to well destroy them with tailwind she consumes less energy while she is in the air when casting her one and when casting her two so yeah you want to cast these abilities while you're well hovering in the air and yeah that will allow you to save on um, some energy the third ability is called turbulence and this is your survivability skill after casting this ability you summon this aoe around you that will deflect all bullets so you're basically invulnerable to any kind of projectile but you're very vulnerable against like toxic clouds or any kind of melee attack so you still have to be careful but if we are flying usually melee attacks won't hit us and usually the fourth ability is tornado but i did replace it with roar but what tornado does is you cast these tornadoes forward if you just press the ability they will move on their own if you hold the ability they will stay where you're pointing them at and if you shoot at the tornadoes they will absorb one of the elements of your weapon depending on which one has the highest amount this element can be overrated, so if you shoot the same tornado with another element and you deal more damage of that element, it will absorb this new element. So uh, that's a lot of elements, but you, you get the point. It's basically a thing you can change whenever you want. For example, you want to apply corrosive and then viral, you can absolutely do that. They have quite a big radius and they will also pick up smaller enemies and basically make them do nothing and just stay in the air. They don't deal a lot of damage unless you build for them but there are some builds that are quite fun anyways back to the actual build we are using roar and roar is a very simple ability you press it you gain a damage boost for your weapons and your abilities as well so we will deal more damage with everything in our kit and we can also buff all our allies inside this massive radius of 43.75 meters then moving to the mods i'm using aerodynamic as my aura but you can replace this one with whatever you like you can go for for example corrosive projection you can go for enemy radar or any other mod you prefer 
I'm using Prime Surefooted as my Exodus mode, and as I always say, you can replace this one with the fabulous mode called Handspring, which is basically the same thing. You can recover a lot faster, and that is quite nice. And then I'm using Prime Continuity for a lot more duration, target fixation, which as I said before, you basically will deal more damage the more enemies you hit, and you have to keep jumping and stay in the air because after two seconds, those buffs will expire. Then I have Prime Flow to increase our energy pool, Rolling Guard for survivability, because sometimes things can happen and rolling and becoming vulnerable for 3 seconds is quite nice. Then we have Umbral Intensify and Argus Secrets for more ability strength and Argo Reach and Stretch for more ability range. The arcanes I'm using are Arcane Energize because we need to replenish a lot of energy and Mot Augmented because Power Strength affects everything in our kit other than, well, Turbulence against and it's a simple and passive way to obtain more Power Strength. Moving on to the weapons, uh, your primary can be literally whatever you want. I just went for the Strong Prime because I like it and increasing its crit chance by 150% allows you to red crit with the Incarnum form which is quite fun and these are the Incarnum's evolution for the weapon and this is the build, it's nothing crazy it just is a very simple build but you can use it moving on to the secondary weapons i am using the epitha and this is the weapon we are going to use to apply corrosive onto the enemies because it has a massive aoe of 11.52 meters which is just insane and the build that i'm using literally focuses just on having more aoe with prime fulmination a lot more fire rate with little torrent and dynamic agility then I have Corrosive and Cold, and we are using Cold because of Secondary Shiver. And finally, Augur Seeker and Augur Pact are just here because I wanted to increase the Augur set. The way the energy we use is converting to shields, and that helps us with survivability. And this Arcane allows us to deal 30% more damage per cold status to our enemies, which is just completely insane and will make the damage numbers very, very big. And then your melee can be whatever, I just love the Falcor and it does look nice, so yeah, bonus points for that. I do have a guide for this weapon so you can see how that performs without any external buffs, but the build is just a very simple heavy attack build and we're using melee influence to, well, destroy everything in the map if we need to. And for focus tree you have two options, you can use Xenoric, but for me it's not the best, I'd rather use Madurai, I, I just love this focus tree a lot, and that is as always because of sling strength which increases your ability strength by 40% after doing two slings, and also because of power transfer because this allows your warframe to gain 50% casting speed. Alright, let's actually now test the build against some uh, some enemies here in the simulacrum. We cast a roar and that gives us 68% more damage. Then we group up all the enemies with our two. And we do a um, thing that is, uh, well, it's bullet jumping in the air. And then we slam the ground two times because we still have momentum. And that way we can basically hit the enemies two times instead of once. Which, yeah, it's, it's quite useful. So again, let's grab those buffs, group up the enemies bullet jump your one one time and the second time and uh yeah the enemies are now gone uh this is by the way without priming them with corrosive okay now we will will prime the enemies so again we grab those madurai buffs uh i already have my roar so let's cast our two uh prime the enemies a little bit like so and then we yeah we, we well 29 million damage with R1 because uh, that's fun and let's just summon them without losing the buff there we go um, do this and uh, cast a roar again group up the enemies prime them you can group them if you want to and we then smash them and they're already dead yeah I, I, I really enjoy playing with this build it is very fun and uh, it takes care of everything in seconds which is amazing and you probably have noticed that when I use my one and hit enemies, uh, you, you gain well a, a big, a big target fixation buff, and it just goes up and up and up every time you use it. And there is no cap for this. You can just keep stacking it and deal more and more damage to your enemies. And uh, yeah, it is uh, it is pretty cool. You can just uh, you can just go to insanity, and if you keep up this buff for a long time. 
you will eventually reach like a hundred thousand or so and uh, yeah you will start doing millions and millions of damage and you don't even need to prime enemies anymore it will just straight up one shot them and this build is also nice because if you're bored of well slamming the ground with your face you can also group up enemies and use your incarnate form with the strong prime uh well use roar i guess and uh, having that 150 percent more crit chance while airborne allows you to red crit with the strong prime and it does look quite nice so there we go it's a it's a it's a very cool little thing you can do you group them up and uh, they don't like being hit by a ton of red numbers so yeah it's it's fun it's a, it's another option for this build oh and by the way if you want to see the the falcor uh it's uh it's pretty strong as well so you know you have you have many tools to well 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 i mean uh you you, you see what happens when you use these weapons uh with zephyr so be careful anyways i hope you guys enjoy the build it's very simple and very straightforward i literally haven't seen zephyr being played in a long time and i do think this is a fun little build that you can use to well get used to zephyr and maybe have a little fun with this amazing warframe now for the fashion frame part of the video this is what i have going on this time it isn't one of my best works but i kind of like the mass of colors and so i kept it and the colors i'm using are uh well these i'm just going to scroll through them and you can see which palette they come from and which colors i used and yeah that is pretty much the colors uh emissive they are very dark colors nothing too bright in here and the same goes for the energy colors because i don't want to blind people while i'm spamming my one onto the ground so that's why i have those colors and my attachments are the same color and the same goes for the cyandana i'm using the harrier skin with the helmet as well the zephyr noble animation and not the harrier animation because it's a it's a bit too too well uh, too active for my likings and i prefer that one I'm using all the Arca attachments. Then I have the Aspirus Ephemera, which you... Uh, I think you cannot get this one anymore because it was from an event, but uh, it might still be around from like bar or something. I am not sure, but you can use whatever Ephemera you like. And I'm using the Ember Heirloom Signa from the Ember Heirloom uh, pack. So if you have 400 Platinums to spend, you can buy the whole pack and you get this cool Signa as well. And the Cyandana I'm using is Hildrin's signature Cyandana called Surator Cyandana. And uh, this one also costs platinums and not, well, real money. And I think all the parts I'm using for this fashion are free to play friendly, so you can just farm platinums and buy them, which is pretty cool. I will now leave you to the showcase with the usual Greener Survival in Steel Path, so you can see what Zephyr can do in a realistic scenario. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Have a great rest of the day and bye bye.
sometimes Sorry that I fall away sometimes Yeah, yeah The end Got to end it all on the weekend Sorry that I feel that way sometimes Sorry that I feel that way sometimes Oh, oh, yeah You don't really wanna know me Hanging in the corner with the nose Like this life. 